Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Good night, good night, saints of God. Hallelujah. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Huh? Those of you in the sanctuary, praise God. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Those of you who are online viewing this live stream, we greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm your host, Pastor Bishop Dr. Michael W. Smith. And we are streaming live here from Kingdom Seekers Ministries International Miracle Healing Center. We are a church in the heart of the city, with the city in our heart. And we welcome you, praise God, to this hour, our second night of Convention 2024. We are celebrating 18 years of ministry. Glory to God. And God has been so good to us. And we, we thank you for joining the celebration with us. And, and those of you in the sanctuary, thank you for joining us as we celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Those of you online, praise God. If you're nearby, we are located at 177 Spanish Town Road. Praise God, that's right at the corner of Spanish Town Road and Maxfield Avenue. You can come on down to the sanctuary. There is room for you here. Praise God in the sanctuary. So come on down and join us. Those of you who are joining the live stream, I want you to just uh, do something for me now. Hit the share button and hit the like button. Praise God, share this broadcast with somebody and press like so you will be notified whenever we are streaming live again. We give God thanks, praise God. And I want to send a big shout out to all our partners, praise God, in Jamaica and in the diaspora, praise God. We thank you for partnering with this ministry. We appreciate your generous monetary uh, donations that you give to this ministry. There is so much work that we need to do as we hasten the coming of the kingdom of God. The kingdom is already here, but we thank God that you are partnering with this ministry. We want to finish the homeless shelter. Glory to God. And so continue to sow into this ministry. Continue to pray. We thank you for your prayers. We need your prayers and we need your financial contributions to get the job done. If you're not already a partner of this ministry and you would like to partner with this ministry because the Lord has put on your heart to partner, this is good ground. And so you can sow into this ministry, it's good ground and you will receive a harvest. And so uh, you can give to this ministry, praise God, whether it's a one-time generous love gift or it's a monthly contribution or fortnightly or weekly, however you want to do it. There's an account at Sajikor Bank in the name of Kingdom Seekers Ministries, Sajikor Portmore Branch. But you can go into any Sajikor Branch and make your donation right there. Or you can do it from the comfort of your home. You can stay at home and just go online. Praise God. The account number, it's a checking account in the name of Kingdom Seekers Ministries. The account number is 5500705061. That's 5500705061. And you can give that way. If you are overseas and you want to show and you have a PayPal account, you can just go to Kingdom Seekers Ministries at yahoo.com. That's our email address. Type in our email address and it will take you straight to our PayPal account and you can give that way. It's another way for you to be blessed. 
So we thank God. Hallelujah. I want to send a shout out to our, our branch there in Kenya. Kiss it, Kenya. Pastor Hanson and the brethren, we greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. We send a shout out to Sister Dorothy there in England. Praise God. Claudia there in England. Andrew there in the US of A. Uh, Reverend Craig there in Canada. And for all our other viewers all over this world, we thank you for joining this broadcast. Uh, those of you online, just take up your phone right now and call about three persons and share the link. Tell them Kingdom Seekers Ministries is streaming live. Share the link and let them be blessed. Uh, I'm believing that God is moving by His Spirit in this place. I can feel the presence and the power of God in this place. Uh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Uh, and I'm expectant. Is anybody here expectant tonight? Lift your hand and shout the high praise. Come on, just lift your hand and shout the high praise in this place. If you are expectant, I believe God is going to do miracle signs and wonders tonight. I believe, hallelujah, somebody's going to get their deliverance. I believe somebody's going to get their healing tonight. I believe somebody's going to get their breakthrough tonight. I believe somebody's going to get their miracle tonight. Because he's a miracle working God. And so we come to praise Jesus. Just lift your hands all over this building. And just open up your mouth and begin to praise God. Oh come on somebody just begin to tell God. He's a great big wonderful God. And we thank God for this opportunity to praise him. Those of you who are online wherever you are. Ah, in your bedroom, you might be in your bed watching, you might be in your kitchen, your living room, your dining room. I don't know what time it is there in your part of the world. You might be even at work in the office. You might be driving in your vehicle. Just lift your hand now and begin to praise God. Come on. Huh? Because when the praises go up, huh? blessings come down. Huh? Healing come down. Huh? Deliverance come down. Come on, just praise God with me right there. Don't, don't worry about who's watching you. Just lift your hands and begin to praise God right now. Huh? Speak in a heavenly language right now. Come on, just begin. Come on, somebody just begin to praise God right now. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. He deserves all the praise. Do I have anybody inside here who's excited for Jesus? If you love Jesus, shout something inside here. I'm not going to let no rock praise, praise him. I'm not going to let no tree praise him. The Bible said, let everything that I've breath praise ye the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, it's a time to worship. It's a time to praise tonight. Oh my God, last night was wonderful, huh? magnificent. Huh? The man of God all the way from Antigua Bay, huh? he came and he delivered a word. Huh? People got delivered. Huh? People, oh my God, huh? he broke the spirit of poverty huh? over the church. Huh? That spirit of poverty was broken. Huh? And so we believe God huh? is going to move by his spirit tonight. Huh? And we believe that there are great things in store tonight huh, for God's beautiful people. Huh. Hallelujah. The Bible said, huh, hallelujah, where there is unity, God commands his blessing. Huh. And so we thank you huh, that we are in one accord tonight. Huh. We thank you huh, that we are in the unity of the field tonight. Huh. We thank you. Huh, that we are all in the spirit tonight. Huh? And so Father we want you to move. Yes, Lord we need a move from you tonight. Yes. We need a move from you tonight almighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus. We need a move from you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Huh? So Father move by your spirit. Huh? My God I feel God in this place. Ah. Huh? Uh, 
We are all in this place uh, in one accord. Thank God. Now I tell you, we are here. Bless you. The musicians are here. The worship team is here. But most importantly, God is here. The speaker is here. Glory to God. But most importantly, God is here. And so we give God thanks tonight. We give Him all the glory and the praise tonight. And we thank you. Those of you viewing, praise God, joining this wonderful worship service tonight. Night two of our annual convention. And we are going under the theme, free at last. Thank God I'm free at last. And so in a moment, the worship team is coming. But before that, praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Acts. Praise God. Reverend uh, Colleen McLeod to please come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, okay. No, not yet. I'm going to go by the program. Not yet, Rev. I'm sorry. We are called to order right now. It's time to worship. How many of you ready to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? How many of you ready to worship? I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Huh? Thanks. Stand to your feet. Huh? Praise God. Hallelujah. As Reverend McLeod come and do the invocation now. Praise God. And then after that, we will go straight into our praise and worship for tonight. Praise God. So Reverend McLeod, please come. Praise God and do the invocation.
started here right. And we have made up in our hearts and our minds to be in tears. Let me just give you a word of advice. If you really want to be in tears, what God has started in your life, what 2024, you want to see things come to fruition. It is simple. Follow and be obedient to your leader. God has placed some instrumental people in our lives as leaders. They know that they're not perfect. But deep down in their hearts, of hearts, their ultimate desire is to get in and do it right by God. By leading these people into the promised land. to do is not pause at any moment in time to make any idol start our own little meeting our own little backbiting meeting our own sus meeting our own little whatsapp group to chat and tear on each other we can't do better and God wants us to do better leaders they have to give account because God is going to hold them accountable but God is also going to hold accountable the followers and that is us I implore us to allow God to reign 2024 in our life by just listening and following our leaders pray them up genuinely wholeheartedly they cannot do this on their own they are human beings just like us. They need our prayers and they go on their behalf on our behalf to God. The same way most get the commandments of how to lead the people. They have to go to God to find out what God wants them and forget for them to the commandments also to leave their house. It's not in a different same principle. We have to follow. So we Oh, Lord.
Yes, yes, he is. Let us not stay at his feet. Stay in his presence. And watch his mighty hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I had no more.
Ministries 18th Annual Convention, the second night. Is there anyone visiting with us for the first time? All right, we have two first time visitors. One of the visitors I know very well. So welcome, Auntie Ava, and it's good to have you. And we have a young man to the back. Welcome, and if you don't have a church home, you can always make Kingdom Seekers Ministry your church home. And we have a special guest. He is Dr. Ray Carr William. He will be our speaker for the night. So Bishop Dr. Ray Carr Williams was born in the parish of Kingston and grew, it grew up in the community of Greenwich Town. He, he surrendered to the Lord in 1983 and was baptized in the Model Church of God on the 4th of February 1990 and received the gift of the Holy Ghost. In April 2002, he was ordained as a lay, lay minister, then as Reverend in two, September 2008, and as Bishop in March 2021. For the past 15 years, Bishop Dr. Ray Carr Williams has been serving as the overseer for the Model Church of God, which has three branches across Jamaica. Bishop Williams is a servant leader who embraces participation and democracy. He does well at administration, teaching of the word, and generally very organized. He's very supportive of his, me of his members, reaching out to them in their time of need. Dr. Williams is a chartered accountant with doctoral degrees in business administration and ministry, coupled with over 25 years experience in leadership and management of leading organizations in Jamaica. A fellow of the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants and Institute of Chartered Accountants of Jamaica. He currently serves as the Chief Financial Officer of the JAN Money Services with responsibility for five companies operating in Canada, United Kingdom, US, USA, Cayman, and Jamaica. Dr. Ray Carr Williams is a qualified counselor holding a Master's of Arts degree in pastoral psychology and counseling. He has also been international training in advanced leadership for evangelism at the Agar, uh, sorry, Agai Institute in Hawaii. Dr. Williams is the Vice President and Pro Vice Chancellor of the One Way International Theological Seminary and also serves the institution in the capacity of a distinguished professor. In 2021, he was awarded as Distinguished Fellow of the American Association for Higher Education and Accreditation, a lifetime fellowship appointment at, doc at doctoral level. Dr. Williams writes several articles in the Jamaica Observer, the author of three books, A Justice of the Peace for St. Catherine, a registered marriage officer for the island of Jamaica, a past board member for Merle Grove High School. He has been married for 26 years to Reverend jo Joy Roberts Williams and a, an experienced business professional who supports a vote heartedly in ministry. Together, they have produced three lovely children. Bishop Dr. Williams likes jogging and recreational walking. One of his favorite Bible quotes is Psalm 121, one to two. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. What an introduction. introduction. Let's stand and make Bishop Dr. Ray Carl Williams feel welcome. Give praise to the Lord tonight. Give him all the glory, give him all the honor, give him all the praise. Indeed, he's awesome tonight. Hallelujah. I, the blood of Jesus, I prevail over sickness.
tonight. Take all the glory. We lift you up in this atmosphere. We declare that you are Lord, our Lord. You are Lord, our Lord. Every achievement, everything that we own tonight, we submit them to you. And we say, take all the glory for yourself. And we declare that we prevail tonight through the blood of Jesus Christ. Even now, as your word will go forth, we ask that it goes forth with clarity. We ask God that it will go forth and impact the life of your people. That hearts will be touched tonight. Hearts will be delivered. Hearts will be set free. Hearts will experience the freedom that comes from the living God. And we thank you for being here tonight. And we thank you for what you do among us tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody give him a clap offering tonight. Hallelujah, indeed he's awesome. And he is worthy to be praised. You may be seated, you may be seated. This evening, it's a, it's a real pleasure for me to be here to share with the Kingdom Seekers Ministries International. Yes, uh, I'm not a convention speaker, but when Rep asked me, I did not even hesitate. Shall we bless the Lord? And so tonight, I am really, really happy to be here to share with you. Yes, knowing that we are in the same vicinity and we are dealing with similar challenges, but we know that God is able tonight to give freedom, and so that's why we are here tonight. I want to congratulate you all on 80 years of convention. It's a long time coming, amen. And I'm sure that the grace that has kept you to this point, this same grace is going to lead you on. Keep pressing on, keep going on, because the Lord of hosts is with you, and the God of Jacob is our refuge tonight. Praise God. I want to greet Bishop Dr. Michael W. Smith. Amen. I want to greet his lovely wife, Reverend Paulette Smith, and all the brethren here of Kingdom Seekers Ministry. I want to greet all my brethren who came along with me from the Mother Church of God. I'm going to invite you to stand. I'm going to ask the rest of the congregation, please, to make them welcome tonight. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Going out on Sunday night is not an easy task. You may be seated. I heard Rev said last night that they haven't had night service for a long time. Bless the Lord. I've been to a few, but each time I go to them, it's a real, real challenge, especially on a Sunday night. Shall we bless the Lord? When it was time to get ready, I felt like I want to crawl into my bed. But I say I have to be here because God has a word for you, and I believe this word is also for me tonight. Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I want to bring you into the scripture uh, that is the theme scripture tonight that comes to us from Luke chapter 13 verses, I want to read from verse 10 through 14. And he, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. We're talking about Jesus. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight. Hallelujah. She was made straight and glorified God. And the rulers of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. Shall we say glory to the living God tonight? So I want to preach from my outline, but I want to let you know I'm going by the Holy Spirit tonight. Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. So when we think about the scripture tonight, it causes us to focus on a woman that was healed on the Sabbath day. Hallelujah. It emphasizes that there is spiritual freedom and that there is spiritual freedom that can come to us as we look to Jesus tonight. It also shows us that there is freedom in worship to glorify God when we are healed. Praise God. And that's what this woman experienced. 
So as we look at the scripture tonight, there is three things that I want to zero in on what this woman experienced. The first thing is that she experienced physical, she, and she was experiencing freedom from physical bondage. Freedom from physical bondage. Shall we bless the Lord? The word of God shows us that the woman had a condition. A condition where she was going through an infirmity. We're talking about when the enemy has attacked your life. Praise God. And place sickness on you. And it causes you to be in bondage. Praise God. And many of us tonight, we are going through similar situations. But the thing is that we cover up dress up and people look at us and think that we are whole but tonight we are declaring that freedom will come because Jesus is in the house and he's here to set the captives free can somebody give me praise so for 18 years this woman was going through a very uncomfortable situation a situation that had her bound a situation that deformed her can you think about it years you are bound down and you cannot straighten up yourself sometimes when we bow our heads down and we come back we feel such busyness praise god but for 18 years this woman was in this condition and there was no help i believe she went to many doctors tried many sources but there was no help because what you realize she was going Can somebody give me praise? So there was a physical ailment, a physical handicap, an uncomfortable posture. But the woman made herself comfortable. Her norm becomes a reality for her. When we look at her, no, we say we cannot experience that. But she made it her norm and she continued for 18 years. She was coming to the synagogue coming for more of God but she was still in her condition shall we bless the Lord shall we bless the Lord and there's so much that can be said because sometimes the saints are coming to shop but we're so caught up in our sermon caught up in our teaching and we miss following the spirit of God so that lives can be delivered and lives can be set free she was unable to stand upright she was bound in a condition that is so, to me, it was very uncomfortable. But while Jesus was teaching, and he tells us who he is tonight, a God of compassion and love and mercy. Yes, he was teaching in the synagogue, but he noticed this woman, and he noticed that she needed help. He did not stick with the tradition and say that it's a Sabbath, so let her stay until another day. Jesus called her forth because he knew that her condition was a dire one, and only Jesus could solve that problem. Hallelujah! And indeed, the woman came forward. She experienced the compassion of Jesus. She experienced his intervention because when Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, all tears are wiped away. He takes the gloom and he fills our lives with glory. All is changed when Jesus comes to stay. Jesus came to stay with her. And the songwriter says that Jesus knows all about our sorrows. And he will die till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. And what I realize is that when the woman come forth, Jesus laid his hands on her and he spoke into her life. Praise God. And she experienced instant healing. Hallelujah. Because there is power in Jesus tonight. I declare instant healing over every condition in the sanctuary tonight. You are not here by chance. You are here because the Lord wants to deliver. The Lord wants to touch your life and give you freedom in this season and in this time. Shall we bless the Lord? 
Hallelujah. The second thing I noticed about this woman that she didn't only experience physical freedom tonight, but she also experienced spiritual freedom from the bondage that she was going through. So her bondage was where the enemy had her bound, the enemy had her oppressed, the enemy had her all under control. But Jesus came and he set her free. Praise God. And so I declare tonight, you will not leave the way you came.
We declare that we are no longer slaves to the enemy. We declare that we are not living in pride. But we are open and honest and humble before the living God. For as we humble ourselves before the living God, he shall lift us up in due season. Humble thyself under the mighty hand of God and he shall lift thee up. Shall we bless the Lord? So the third thing I notice about the woman is that she experienced freedom to worship and to glorify God. Praise God, the woman having experienced the healing, she moved to a posture of giving praise, of giving glory to the living God. She expressed gratitude to the living God. Sometimes in our ministry, as leaders, we brethren are giving the gratitude that we need. They don't show the thanks that they ought to give. If we fail to do, you know, just a little for them, they take us and they hold us accountable. And another thing I feel, you know, but the demand of us as leaders is very great. And no matter how much you give, sometimes the gratitude is not there. But you see, when you are set free and when you're living in freedom, you will give, you will give gratitude when gratitude is you, and you will praise God. He is the one who has set you free. Shout out, that's his name. So the woman no longer experiencing physical bondage. No longer going through no spiritual bondage. So she was now free to give God praise. I believe sometimes people come to worship and we have been pumping them. We have been encouraging them. We have been forcing them. Give worship. Give worship. But the thing is that they are going through a bondage. They are going through a situation that if God doesn't deliver them, we can't see them worshiping. But as the Lord delivers, we believe that we must move to another level in our worship. We must express gratitude to Him, for indeed He is awesome and worthy to be praised. Shall we bless the Lord? So as the Lord delivers us, we must experience. We ought to embrace freedom in worship. So if you come into church and you're not giving worship, we start wonder what is happening. We wonder if you're going through a condition. We wonder if you are challenged in your spirit. But we're declaring tonight if we are free people, we ought to give God praise. Our pastor must be to give God glory. We must come down, come to church for anyone to oil us and push us and cause us to get into the mood of worship. Worship must be a part of us. It must be a lifestyle. It must be something that we want to do because God desires worship. He creates us that we must worship Him for He desires worship. Shall we bless the Lord? And every freedom that we have, we must use it to glorify Him. The woman realized that she was now free, so she didn't get caught up in the, in the healing and being excited and say, oh, I'm set free, so it is over. She moved to a posture of worship. Hallelujah. She wasn't concerned about herself at that point. She was concerned about giving worship to the Lord. I see the Lord bless sometimes the members of church. And what you see, Bishop, is that they either not worshiping anymore or they don't come for the worship part. They come at the parts that they feel comfortable to come. Or, you know, they tell you that this church is too local. Yes, it's too local. So they're going to find somewhere else to come. Uh, somebody asked me, how you want to come all the way to Kingston to come and worship? And so many churches along the way that you have passed. I see a those places to go to work every day. So why can't I pass them? I go to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So sometimes we find excuse not to give God worship because he has blessed us. Yes, I will miss the mark. When the Lord has blessed us, it's time to give him more worship. It's not time to say that I've reached and God has already had favored me so I can take a break. No! It's time to worship. But many miss the mark and say, oh, I'm so faithful. I don't need to worship. You can go ahead, Pastor. You don't get your blessing yet. You still are working away for it. So when it comes, you can do what I'm 
to it. Just relax. Because God favors me. It doesn't work like that. God can remove our candlestick. And we will find out that we are going to be in that jeopardy. So let us give him worship. Because that's what he desires. And he's worthy of it. Shall we bless his name tonight? Hallelujah. So the point that I want to see right here is that after the woman was healed, there were those in verse 14 that had a problem with her being healed. Why? Because it was a Sabbath day. They would have a problem with it was any other day. But they had a problem because Sabbath day is for worship. It's not for healing. Can you imagine we are coming to the sanctuary but it's not a place for healing. But where else will we get the healing? So they were missing the mark. As leaders of the synagogues, they, they respond with indignation. We're talking about anger. They were being annoyed by what Jesus did. Ah, and so I want to challenge us tonight uh, that as you're going through your situation uh, and the Lord brings forth deliverance, uh, don't let nobody come and discourage you. Let, let nobody speak over your life uh, and let you feel like you are wrong uh, to be delivered. Uh, or to seek the Lord for your deliverance. As uh, the songwriter says, Hallelujah, anyhow. Never let your problems get you down. When temptation comes your way, hold your head up high and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. The Lord deserves praise. In spite of what the enemy tries, in spite of what the enemy says, for no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. The tongues that rise up in judgment, we condemn them because we want to worship. We want a life of freedom and no tongue going to keep us down. No tongue is going to kill us before our time. We declare that we will speak the word. We declare that we will live the word. We declare that the Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. We declare that greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world. And so no enemy going to keep us down. We're going to give God the praise. We're going to give him the glory. For indeed he is altogether lovely. Amen. So when we look at the woman's condition tonight, it was a situation about healing. But if I check the records tonight, all of us have some condition that we will like a little freedom. Uh, when they think about the cost of living, I want some freedom there. Sometimes when I check my finances, I need some freedom, some financial freedom. Sometimes when we check our relationship, whether we have our spouse, our children, our co-workers, we need some freedom there. Uh, when we check our spiritual life and how we need time for the living God, we need some freedom there because we're not giving it all. Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we bless the Lord? So sometimes we're just looking that all oh, the message is about sweetness, but think about your condition tonight because the Lord comes to set the captives free. So don't let the enemy trick you and tell you that our only sick people need freedom. I need freedom. You need freedom. And it's available through the living God tonight. Give him a clap offering tonight. Give him a praise. Give him a glory. Hallelujah. Yes, I know our condition tonight. Some of us who can't stand up straight. Some of us who are deformed. Some of us who are challenged. Some of us who are handicapped. Some of us who are restrained. Some of us who are hampered. Whatever the posture is, it's not a pleasant one. Very uncomfortable. We are comfortable in some areas, but there is a particular area that we are challenged and it worries us. It weakens us. Can you imagine when you can't pay your mortgage? You can't pay your rent. A children school fee out. You come to church and bishop asks you to moderate and preach word and give testimony. No, oh, you are challenged. But when we believe in the living God, we can get freedom tonight. Hallelujah, we can get freedom tonight. And sometimes we're not going to God when it can't be said that we think God needs to hear. The Lord will talk to him about everything. 
Yes, whatever complaints you're bringing, talk to him about it because he is a deliverer and he's an all sufficient God. He can meet us at any point in our lives tonight. Shall we bless the Lord? So we're not able to stand up because we are going through a challenge. But I want to let you know that God desires that we be free tonight. God desires that we be free in every area of our lives because when you are truly free, then worship will flow. And He wants worship from you tonight. Hallelujah. He doesn't desire for you to stay in the condition that you are in. So it's time to break free. It's time to break free from your bondage and experience the freedom that comes from the living God. So there are three steps that I want us to zero in on as we seek freedom tonight. The first thing is that we need to identify the bondage that we are going through. Sometimes it's very simple. Just can't pay one bill can cause you to feel sick. Can cause you to be grumpy. You know, talk to nobody and then everybody pull back from you. Can you imagine it? Because you are going through your situation and it disfigures your face. Nobody wants to be near you. Just one meal. So there is something that can challenge us, but we don't spend time to identify it. We need to identify the bondage. Recognize the limitation. Recognize the struggles that you're facing in your life. Understand how it is impacting you and how it is keeping you back and how it's hindering your worship because God desires worship. You can't tell God we don't worship you become a bit of a pain. It won't work. So Lord, I want you to help me with this bit because I desire to give you praise. Hallelujah. And we have to acknowledge the need for freedom. We have to acknowledge it. Acknowledge that we need freedom. Some of us are saying, all right, if I get a little job, I will pay the bill. No, the job may never come. So you must realize that you need some help. You need somewhere to turn to so that you can move to another level. So the second thing is that we have to seek liberation. We have the problem we identify, but many times we stick with the identification. We don't move from that level. We have the problem. It's my condition. It's my arthritis. It's my diabetes. But we're not moving to the next level to seek that we be liberated from that condition. So the best source tonight is Jesus. Sometimes we are turned to doctors. We are turned to medication. We go on the Google and we search. And anything Google says we try. But many times we are not trying Jesus. I want you to try him tonight. For he's our source of comfort. He's our source of help. He's our creature of troubled water. He's our deliverer. He's our sustainer. And he is tonight. So you turn to him. Begin to pray for your deliverance. And when the thing seems rough, you know a time for fasting and prayer. Yes, it may be one day fast. It may be three day fast. It may be seven day fast. Could be a 14 day fast. Or a 10 day fast. A 20 day fast. Or a 40 day fast. Whatever the fast is, allow the Lord to direct you. And allow him to use you. So that you can fight for your deliverance. Shall we bless the Lord? You have to pray for your deliverance. Pray for your healing. Sometimes you have brothers and sisters. Every week they come to church, they must ask for prayer. Because Bishop must, must be praying for them and they must be delivered. But how much are you hunger for that healing and doing your part so that you can be set free? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are speaking it tonight that it comes with a dedication. It comes with you putting something into the mix that you can be delivered. It doesn't mean that you cross your tent and fold your arms and watch others work for you to be delivered. You've got to be hungry for your deliverance. Shall we bless the Lord? Sometimes you have to seek support from the community of believers. So when you think about it, sometimes we as church people, we cannot be trusted. So the brethren rather to go to our unsafe and go take counsel because they don't trust the members of their church to ask them to even pray them through a situation. May God help us tonight to get it right because if we stay in that country, 
salvation. It means that the whole of us are in bondage. Shall we bless the Lord? So as church people, we need to know confidentiality. We need to know how to show compassion. We need to realize that we have to be genuine about what we are doing and how we treat each other. The word of God said we must bear each other's burden. So you can't say I bear my burden and you are walk and spread my business and you are push up your mouth but at me and you are pretending that you are with me when you are here fighting against me and giving me the enemy open doors to ravish me some more. I believe we need to rise up and stand in unity against the weapons of the enemy for the weapons of our warfare. They are not carnal but they are mighty through God through the putting down of the strongholds of the adversary. So we see our brothers at walk and they are bowed down, can't straighten up and we are talking about it. But can we do something about it? Can we begin to pray for them? Can we begin to show compassion? Can we begin to fight with them in this fight that they can be straightened? We've got to do our part. Shall we bless the Lord? The saddest thing is that your day may come. You're going to need Bishop to help you. You're going to need another brother or sister. The same one you never want to pray for. And the same one they will come to come pray over you. And you know what it's going to be? It's going to be a challenge for you to get the healing. You know why? Because while they never pray, the devil will remind you of how you fight against that brother. How you fight against that sister. So the prayer cannot be effective. I believe we need to care for each other and really realize that our day may come and we live our life in a way that as we love and serve each other before our day come, somebody will love and serve us the same. Shall we bless the Lord? God desires that from us. And the final thing is that when the freedom comes and the deliverance comes and the healing comes and the things sort out and everything good again, we need to now embrace the freedom. Yeah. We need to embrace the freedom so we surrender our burdens to Jesus and we begin to walk by faith and not by sight. We begin to trust in the power of the living God. Yes, so when another condition comes, you said, listen, my God delivered me then and I'm lifting my faith another time that he's going to deliver me now. Shall we bless the Lord? The evil powers, as they were facing the fire, they said to the king, oh king, you're going to live forever. But even if the Lord not come to the rescue, me now bow. Shall we bless the Lord? That's the posture that we must have. That even when the enemy are fight, even when we are challenged, we now bow to the enemy. We now give up. Even when healing not come, we're gonna hold on to the unchanging hand of God. Yes, because though he slayed him, yet we not trust him. That's what Job said. And we need that posture tonight because that is gonna help us to stand fast in this time. Shall we bless the Lord? We've got to embrace the, the freedom that God gives. We've got to embrace the power that he has given to us and the healing that we have received of him. And we have to live a life of gratitude to him. A life of gratitude. A life of service in response to the freedom that we have. Many of us tonight, when we look at where we are tonight, we marveled. We are surprised. I can't believe I mean this. The same little boy I used to run up in a British town. God to lift me up to be working with top organization in a Jamaica. Can be lifting me up to be bishop of church. Can be lifting me up to serve in different areas and to mingle with some people that ordinary people don't mingle with. Are you going to be a number to call them? It's because of the grace of God. It's not even about me or what I have attained. It's about the grace of God tonight. And so I embrace the freedom that comes from the living God. The songwriter says, free at last. It is finished. Life has triumphed over death. Jesus reigns. Bless the name of God Almighty. I'm free at last. I'm free.
prayer class. The point I missed was that sometimes we are to come to the community of faith. James 5 helps us to realize that. He says, if any among you are sick, afflicted, let him pray. He said to Mary, so he showed that we are going through different conditions. Some sick and going through their situation, but some are merry at the same time. Praise God. But we can sing songs and hymns with them. Yes, and if there's any sick, call for the elders of the church and let him pray over them. Hallelujah. And anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith. And ordinary prayer we are talking about. Because sometimes we are praying many times, but we pray ordinary. The prayers are missed the mark. The prayer not go nowhere. Yes, and sometimes the prince of Persia black our prayers. But when the prayer of faith goes for the believers, the sick shall be healed. The minds that are bound shall be set free. Those that need to be liberated shall be liberated. So we declare prayer of faith in this house. We declare that we will stand for prayer. You don't pray like you're a joke. You pray with faith.
If it's only one. I will pray a general prayer for everyone. But if you have a specific need tonight, I want you to lift your faith and come to the altar as we pray with you. Because there is nothing impossible with the living God. Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we bless the Lord? Oh, it is Jesus. Yes.
you're here to set them free. Release the fire of heaven upon their lives tonight. And burn up the condition that hinders them. The conditions that hold them back from giving you true worship. Then try the situation that helps them. Bow that they cannot worship. They cannot live straight. And they're going through a rough patch. And declare a release through the power of the living God. And that they will walk before you and be perfect in this generation. Yes, yes, Jesus, and your life will be an example to draw others to you. Cover them under your blood, children, God. Break the spell of the enemy. Cause them to live in total freeness. Freedom in Jesus' name. We lift up the congregation to you tonight, Lord. Ah, we pray tonight your blessing upon your people. We pray your blessing upon the rest of this convention. That you bless the speakers and everyone who is share in the rest of this convention. We declare a special anointing and a special blessing and a release of your favor upon Kingdom Seekers Ministry. I declare that the doors will remain open. We declare that men and women will come in and have their full time for bread. We declare that this church will be an impact in this region of Jamaica and that God we will not compromise we will not come down but we will continue to declare the word so bless us collectively tonight as we go let us walk in the freedom let us embrace the freedom to walk in faith and to trust you amidst what the enemy tries for nothing good will you withhold from them that walk uprightly so we want to walk straight Lord we want to walk upright we don't want to be bent to so every condition that seems to hold us down, that seems to bring us over, we declare tonight our freedom from the liberating God. We declare that the 18 year bondage will be broken tonight. For we are moving up, we are going forward. Let's go forward for God. We're going to fight like soldier man. We now give up, we now bow, we now compromise, we now give up. We're going forward. But we go Still, teach you hope as well. Though the pillars dash and sway, we believe that with a conquering tread, we're gonna push ahead. And God, you're gonna roll the sea away. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank you for hearing us tonight. We thank you for everyone, Lord. Those who have been here, those who are wishing to be here tonight, I just pray a blessing upon your people. Oh God, and we pray that the rest of this convention will continue to be a blessing. And for those that come to the altar, you continue to trust in the living God, for indeed He is able, and there is none like Him. God bless you, everyone. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, man of God. God bless you. Praise God. What a tremendous word. How many have you received that? I believe that some people have been set free tonight. I believe that everybody, as Bishop said, you're not here by accident. And I know to come out on a Sunday night is not easy. Bishop talk about his immature and me that too. When it's time, it's me that. But to God be the glory. Something wonderful has happened here tonight. Somebody lift your voice and praise that man. Put your hand over your head and give the Lord a clap up for him. Something wonderful has happened here tonight. To God be the glory. Is there anybody here, just per chance, per chance, anybody here in this sanctuary, you're not seeing, just, just put up your hand, just, just by chance, you're not seeing, or you're a backslider, just, just raise your hand, you need Jesus tonight, I see that hand, anybody else? Anybody else? Those of you who are online, this is for you also. I'm going to ask you to just stand for me, please. Just stand with your hand your hand up. Yes. That's all right. You're, you're brave. It, it takes a lot of courage to do this. But I believe you came here tonight. 
Was it you that said you, you couldn't make it tonight when I called and talked to you? Was it you? No? Come for me, please. Just, just come. Just come. It's all right. Don't worry yourself, man. I'm just going to pray with you. Don't worry yourself. Just come right here for me, please. Yeah, man. Do you know you, man? Is you? You're, you're the cosmetologist? Yeah. Yeah. We never talked to him. Eh? We didn't talk to him. I didn't talk to you. No, not today. No, 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 not today. Some days ago when I was telling you and you said you couldn't come in the nights. You couldn't come, yeah, yeah, couldn't come in the morning. Some of the nights. Oh, you say some. Yeah. Well, bless God you're here tonight. You too, man. And see you. Bob Slider. Come for me, come on closer, man. No fear, you feel that we shall come up, man. <laughs> come on, man. That's right, that's yes, all. Don't worry yourself, man. Jesus said, Come as you are, man. You just come. The greatest thing is to come. You know that, you know that is what will have a lot of people be shot. They have all time of prayer, and because sad to say. Sometimes we as church people kind of make it difficult. But the scripture said that you say you come past that and see to make one proselyte. And when they come, they shut up. They shut up the kingdom. Do you hear that, man? No watch, no face. We don't watch no face in this church. We have said, Jesus. If you have said Jesus, lift up your hand and show everybody. If you have said Jesus, lift your hand and show me. A God church is a human church. You understand? A God church. And can I tell you, God loves you so much. Love you so much. You know your sin, you know your mess, you know your mother, whatever your condition. God loves you. Whatever your sin, God loves you. You don't love this sin, but He loves you. He loves you. He loves you so much that sent His Son Jesus to die for me and for you. Lift your hands, lift both your hands at this hour. Both of you, lift your hands. Stretch your hands to them, please. Congregation. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say it loud enough. So the person beside you can hear. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father God, I am a sinner. I need you to save me. Those of you viewing, you said this. If you, if you are at this place, you need Jesus. This Jesus that just preached. I want you to repeat this prayer. Say, so, I am a sinner. But I need you to save me tonight. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I repent of all my sins. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Make me whole. Jesus, I now make you the Lord of my life. Father God, thank you for saving me tonight. I am now born again. Of your spirit in Jesus name Amen put your hands together and pray just shout hallelujah and share with them shout the Lord is hallelujah and share with them those of you online if you just said that prayer come to us I'm going to take your name please come and take your name one sheep like the prodigal, you, you find your way back home. And if you don't have a church home, it is your church home. You know you talk to me and you say you want to make this your church home. You feel comfortable. 
God knows where my put. He knows which church is for you. And so we thank God for you. Those of you online, if you said this prayer, get in touch with us. Call us wherever you are in Jamaica or all over the world. Call us at 876 371 5324. That's 876-371-5324. Tell us you said that prayer. We'll give you instructions the next step. If you're overseas, find a Bible-based church and get in that church and tell the pastor that you want to serve God. He'll tell you what next, the next step to take. And start your Christian walk right now. It's the first day of a brand new life. This is a new beginning. You are free at last. Praise the Lord. I'm free at last. You know, there's a young lady here, Latisha. That's your name, right? She has a burning testimony. I want to bring her up at this time to come and give that testimony. Please come. Is it Latisha? Please come with your testimony. Normally, yeah, put hands together. She will testify. She is going to testify. Go ahead and testify. Before she does, I'll tell you. When you got baptized? It was last year. In what? It was what? November. When was it? December? November. I baptized you November. Last year. That's November, December, January. That's two, two months and something. Not, not three yet. Not quite three. Share your testimony. Good night, everybody. Alright, so last night I came here, I didn't have any money, right? So, Rel gave me a hundred dollars to sew. And when I saw it after the service, I, I received a blessing. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for it, right? Anything that you're going through, just trust God and pray over it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Be a Christian that much of a testimony already. Isn't that wonderful? Experience the touch. Free at last. Thank God I'm free at last. Bishop, I know you're tired, but you have such a wonderful voice. You come and just sing our theme in I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains. I am free. Everybody stand to your feet. I praise the Lord. I sing along in church. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's such a blessing.
Life has triumphed over death And Jesus reigns Bless the name of God Almighty Free
where we can do it all over again. We can give you the glory all over again. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. Please get your refreshment on the outside before you go home. And see you tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Same place, same time, 7 p.m. And we'll do it all over again. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah.